Welcome to the African Americans in STEM with the Reginald F. Lewis Museum. My name is Terry Taylor and I work in the education department at the museum. Today we will learn about African American men and women um, from our museum galleries that work in careers in medicine in the state of Maryland. Here is an image of the Reginald F. Lewis Museum building from the outside. And then one of the STEM leaders, Ben Carson, can you tell me what you see in the glass display um, cases or photos on this wall? Take a close look. You may see scissors and a blood pressure cuff that goes around your arm to take your blood pressure. In the other glass case, you may see a black medical bag and a stethoscope to hear a patient's heartbeat. Do you see that picture of the doctor listening to the baby's heartbeat with a stethoscope at the top of the wall? These medical tools were given to the museum by the Allen family and Dr. Levi Watkins, who were both black doctors that cared for patients in Maryland. This medical bag was taken on house calls by Ayers Allen to treat patients. In the past, doctors often visit their patients at home instead of just in a doctor's office. Can you believe that? The picture of the young doctor in the surgical gear is Ben Carson. See the cap that he has on top of his head? Carson was a famous surgeon from John Hopkins Hospital. African Americans made valuable contributions to medicine at John Hopkins Hospital for many years. Dr. Ben Carson became the hospital's director of pediatric neurosurgery, which is a fancy name for a children's surgeon who specializes in the nervous system, like the brain. He headed the hospital's department for many years. And Dr. Levi Watkins, who's wearing the glasses, became chief resident or chief doctor in cardiac surgery at Hopkins in 1978. He specialized in heart surgeries. And Dr. Vivian Thomas was a lab technician or a researcher at John Hopkins Hospital. And he developed research and tools that made possible many breakthroughs Throughs in cardiac medicine, which deals with the heart. So let's learn a little bit more about their contributions to STEAM. All of them made great contributions to the field of medicine. At the top, you see Dr. Carson, and he was successful in performing the first successful surgery on Siamese twins, where they were able to live. Siamese twins are born where their bodies are joined together and they are sharing body organs. See the picture where the baby's heads are joined together? Dr. Levi Watkins developed the heart defibrillator. The defibrillator is a tool similar to a heart pacemaker, which helps to control the abnormal heart rhythms. This tool gives an electric shock to get the heart back in rhythm, its heartbeat. Boom, 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 boom. He also was responsible for getting many black doctors at John Hopkins Medical School. He helped to get more students of color enrolled at John Hopkins Medical School than any other doctor ever had before. And then at the bottom, we see a picture of Dr. Vivian Tom um, Thomas. He developed a surgical procedure called the shunt to help treat the heart of blue babies. Blue babies didn't get enough oxygen to the heart to pump oxygen to the rest of their bodies. Therefore, their bodies would turn a bluish color. Thomas helped fix this problem so babies could live and lead healthy lives. The museum also celebrates the many black doctors that practice and treat, treated patients in their neighborhoods and community. Here are some of the first African-American doctors in Maryland that we know about from the past. At the top, you see a picture of Dr. Louise Young, and she was an obstetrician and a gynecologist in 1932. That's a special doctor who works with babies and women's health. And then there's a picture of Dr. Alice T. Allen, Allen at the bottom. He was a doctor who would later become a politician to make laws. He has a highway named after him. And then, we have a picture of Dr. Ulysses G. Bourne. 
who was the first African-American doctor to practice in Frederick County. Well, this wraps up our mini tour of African-Americans in the medical and healthcare field. We hope you enjoyed learning about these Marylanders and maybe one day you might want to pursue a career in medicine. We're now gonna turn it over to our UME 4-H STEAM educator, Albert Lewis, who will tell us more about medical care and has a STEAM activity you can try at home. Take it away, Albert. Thank you, Terry. Hello, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed your tour of the Reginald Lewis Museum of Maryland African-American History and Culture. My name is Albert Lewis. I'm an educator with the University of Maryland Extension, Baltimore City 4-H. Welcome to the Blacks in STEAM Matter program. The Blacks in STEAM Matter program highlights people of color involved in STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. We not only focus on people of color in Maryland, but all over the nation. The goals of the program are simple. We want to encourage youth to participate in STEAM programs, that science, technology, engineering, art, and math programs. We want to expose them to STEAM careers and STEAM professionals of color, but also we hope to inspire them to pursue careers in STEAM professions. For those of you who are not familiar with 4-H, 4-H is a youth development program that help youth become positive adults. The four H's represent the head, the heart, the hands, and the health. And usually when we start a program, we start with the 4-H pledge. It reads as follows. I pledge my head to clearer thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, and my health to better living for myself, my community, my country, and my world. How are the four H's applied to a young person's life? Well, pledging my head to clearer thinking means that youth will be involved in activities that help them be able to think, whether it's math programs, robotics, engineering. When it says, I pledge my heart to greater loyalty, that means I'll be a better friend. I'll be responsible. I'll be a peacemaker. My hands to larger service means that youth pledge to help their communities, whether that's doing a recycling program, picking up litter, helping our neighbors. And pledging my health to better living means that youth will strive to try to eat healthier and try to be physically active. In today's STEAM activity, we're gonna be talking about the anatomy and physiology of the human body. We're gonna discuss the skeletal system and medicine, and also talk about the STEAM professional, Ben Carson. Today's activity will focus on learning about medicine and doctors. We'll also learn about Ben Carson, an African-American physician. We will discuss the skeletal system and see how bones contribute to our health. Our fun activities for today will be making a skeleton out of pretzels. Do you know what a doctor is? Hmm. Well, a doctor or physician is a person trained in the science of medicine. They use these skills to treat sick and injured people. Have you ever dreamed or considered being a doctor? That's a great goal. But how does one become a doctor? Well, doctors learn science. They gain skill in diagnosis and treatment. Some of the things they learn are biology, which is the study of life. They learn about human anatomy and physiology, which is the study of the structure and function of the body. They also learn biochemistry, which talks about the chemical makeup of the body. Doctors must learn big words, such as anatomy and physiology. Do you know what these words mean? Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Well, anatomy means structure, such as our skeleton. Surgery treats disorders of our structure of our body. Physiology refers to function, such as the skeletal system and how it functions together. Diseases usually affects part of our function of our body. Medicine refers to those careers that's involved in the diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of disease. Diagnosis refers to those instruments that allow doctors to examine the inside of our body, such as the stethoscope, or the otoscope or thalmoscope, which is used to examine our ear, nose, and our eyes. Treatment refers to those things to help alleviate any problems we may have or illnesses, such as surgery or cough medicine. Cough medicine help us get rid of a cold or a cough we may be suffering from. Prevention help us not get sick at all, such as vitamin. 
Vitamin C may help us prevent from getting a cold. Communication is also important. Our doctor may ask us about school, about home, or about work to see how we're handling things. Our lifestyle may have a great impact upon our health. Here's examples of diagnostic tools used by doctors. The stethoscope, the ophthalmoscope, and the otoscope. The stethoscope is used to examine our heart and lungs. It has two main pieces, ear pieces and the chest piece. The chest piece are made of two components, the diaphragm and the bell. The bell was used to listen to low frequency sounds, such as blood flow through our veins. The diaphragm is used to listen to high frequency sounds, such as our breathing through our lungs. The ophthalmoscope is used to examine our eyes. It has a window as well as several dials used to open an aperture so we can view out the window a little better. The otoscope is used to examine our ears and our throat. It has a speculum and a viewing window. We attach it to the base like this. The base has an on and off button used to turn on a light so we can examine a little better. This is a picture of the steam professional Ben Carson. Dr. Ben Carson was an American physician. He's the retired director of pediatric neurosurgery at John Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore City. He worked there for several years. He's well known for completing the first separation of Siamese twins who were joined at the back of the head. He has pioneered other procedures as well, such as operating on fetuses within the womb and reviving hemispherectomies to treat seizures. What is a system? Well, a system is a set of things working together, such as our solar system or computer system. Some of you may be familiar with gaming systems, such as Playstations, Xboxes, Nintendo. Those are systems as well, having several components that work together. Our body is a complex system made of several smaller systems. We actually have 12 organ systems inside our body, such as the integumentary system, which consists of our hair, nails, and skin. We have the muscular system, which allow us to move. We have the circulatory system, which uses our heart and blood flow. We have the skeletal system, which we'll talk about today. The nervous system, which controls our reflexes and movements. We have the immune system, which protects us from illnesses and diseases. We have our lymphatic system, which controls fluid balance in the immunological process. We have the digestive system, which breaks down food that we eat. We have the urinary system, which gets rid of waste. We have the respiratory system, which allows us to breathe. We have the human reproductive system, which is involved in creating babies. We also have the endocrine system, which uses hormones and regulate balance in our body. The adult human skeleton system is made of 206 bones. Some of these bones are big, such as our skull, and others are small, like our pinky bone, or the bones in our toes. The skeletal system is a network of bones, which include tendons, ligaments, and cartilage that connects them all together. Tendons is connective tissue that connects muscle to our bones. Ligaments is connective tissue that connects bones to other bones. Cartilage is connective tissue that protects our bones as they rub against each other, it provides a padding or a cushion. I have been talking a lot, so let's review what's going on. Let's review some of the vocabulary we just talked about. What are tendons? Well, tendons are connective tissue that connect bone to muscle. What are ligaments? Ligaments join bones to other bones. What are cartilage? Cartilage provide a padding or a cushion as our bones interact with each other. This is a picture of the human skeletal system. As you see, there are a lot of bones and they all have big names. In today's activity, we're gonna review some of these bones and hope to learn some of the names as well. As we mentioned earlier, our bones are very important in the structure and support of our body. Unfortunately, diseases can affect our bones. An example of some of the diseases are shown here. Osteoporosis 
is the loss of bone tissue. It's pretty common among the elderly. The bone loses calcium and become thinner, and in some cases may even disappear entirely. Arthritis is an inflammatory disease that affects our joints. It affects joints such as our neck, our shoulders, hands, our back, hips, or our knees. It's usually characterized by swelling and pain. You may have heard some of your family members mention they have arthritis or they have pain in their knees. Congratulations! You've just completed a medical school class. You've just learned about the human skeletal system. Now, we're going to make a model of the human skeleton using pretzels, glue, and a sheet of paper. Remember, label those bones. It's important that you learn the terminology or vocabulary associated with the human skeletal system. Here are some examples of skeleton models that other youth have made. Remember, there's no right or wrong way. Use your imagination and your problem solving skills. I hope you're enjoying making your human skeleton model using the pretzels and glue. Thank you everyone for participating today. I hope that you enjoyed the tour of the Reginald Lewis Museum and I hope that you enjoyed or engaged with the STEAM activity. If you have any questions, please contact me at alewis17 at umd.edu. Please share your pictures of your skeletal system with me. I would greatly appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you.